Hey guys, this is Control Destroy. My name's Nathan, aka The One, and today we're going to begin our series on Advanced Onboard Java. This is for people who already have a good grip on the basics and want to learn how to make more complex code. For today's video, we're going to cover how to make advanced toggle switches from custom methods. So let's begin. So here we have very simple code. For our variables, we have a boolean called toggle ready and defaults to false. We have G1A identifying A on our gamepad 1, and we have servo arm position getting the position of servo arm. In our code, we have if G1A is false, then toggle ready is true. So once A is unpressed, then toggle will be ready. And then we have if G1A is pressed and toggle is ready, then set toggle ready back to false. If the servo position is 0, set the position to 1, and if it's 1, set to 0. So there's a very simple toggle switch. Basically, A can flip this servo arm back and forth between the positions of 0 and 1, but only once it has been released, once it has become false. The bad thing about this is it uses this toggle ready variable. If we were to set multiple toggle switches on a bunch of different buttons, we would have to make a new variable for each one, say G1A toggle ready and G1B toggle ready and so on. So we are going to actually make a much more complex method. Not one that makes just a toggle ready variable once this button has been released, but one that can actually detect the instantaneous uh, moment that a button is pressed. How are we going to do that? We don't want to detect when G1A is true, because that is just going to keep going on as we hold it down. We want one moment when G1A goes from false to true to be the instantaneous moment a toggle switch is ran. Let's do this. Let's do this out here. We want to know. So we want to know when G and A goes from false to true, that exact moment. That means we want to know when G and A changes states from what it previously was. That means we need a variable that remembers what G and A previously was. This caused the same dilemma as we had previously with a variable for each one, but we're going to make an automatic array that creates and holds these variables. So, let's begin with a method. We're going to make a new private method. It is going to spit out a boolean, and we're going to call it if pressed. This one will take in a boolean, and we'll call it button. So this method is going to be used, we can ask if a button is pressed, and we can insert a button as our parameter. So if this method returns true, that means the button was pressed, and if it's false, that means it wasn't. So let's start with boolean output. This will just be what we output at the end of the method. So at the end, we'll return the output. And we want it to start as false. So if nothing changes it, it will return false at the end. Now we are going to create an array to hold these variables. To do this, we're going to have to import java.util.arraylist. This will now let us use arrays. So in our global variables, We'll create a new array list by saying array list, and we're going to make it a Boolean array list. We're going to call it Boolean array. And it is a new array list in the type of Boolean. We're creating it, so we'll make that a method. And that's good for now. One thing we want to do is we want to make it all automatic. So when we want to ask a new button if it's pressed, we don't want to have to go and add a bunch of variables so that button can be pressed. That means we want, once a button is asked if it's pressed, we want a new boolean to be appended to this array to hold that value of if it's pressed or not. So to know how we want this to run, let's make an example. We are going to make a boolean called g1a pressed, and it will be equal to if pressed G1A. We'll also do the same with G1B, which we'll make here. Make Boolean G1B equals gamepad 1.B. We'll make G1B pressed equals if pressed G1B. We won't make these do anything, but we want to make a method that can take the information of if pressed for both of these and can detect if they're pressed or not. 
so we're going to make this method create an automatic array that will store two variables that will remember what G1 A's and G1 B's last states were so we can detect if there was a change in that state. But since this loop is constantly ran, we don't want to make a new variable every single time we ask if pressed because we will have hundreds of variables. We need to make sure that we are modifying that one variable every time. We're going to do this by incrementing. We're going to increment by every time this loop it runs to completion, we're going to make the incrementer down to zero, and the method will basically restart. That might sound confusing, but let me show you what I mean. We're going to make an integer called boolean incrementer, and we'll set it to zero. At the end of every loop, we're going to set boolean incrementer back to zero. And at the end of this method, the boolean incrementer will go up one. So boolean incrementer will equal boolean incrementer plus one. So now we can pull values from our array in series from zero, one, two, three. But once the loop comes to completion, it will reset back to zero and we can do it all over again. So let's go through the basics of our method. We are going to make a button was variable that we will use to retrieve the proper value in our array. And we're going to retrieve actually the value of boolean incrementer. Because every time this if press method is run, the incrementer will be at the value of what button we are going to be looking at. And we're going to want to say if button does not equal button was, that means if the value we are currently getting in button does not equal what the button previously was, and button is now true, that means it went from false to true, then we'll make our output true. That means the if press method will become true. So now, how are we going to store button was in our array? So we're going to say if the size of the Boolean array equals the Boolean incrementer, then boolean array dot add false, basically a default new variable. So what does this do? Well, basically at the beginning when we run our program, the boolean array is going to be at size zero. It will have nothing in it. So once the first u and a pressed is ran, the boolean incrementer and the size will be at zero. So we'll add a new variable. And the same thing goes for g one b is press. The boolean incrementer will increment one. The boolean array size will be 1, and it's the same as the boolean, so we'll add a new variable. But the thing is, once this cycles a second time, the boolean array size will be 2 when it's 0, and will be 2 when the boolean incrementer is 1. That means once a variable is added, the boolean incrementer will always be less than the size, so it will not add a new variable. That means basically this if statement only adds a new variable to the array when 1 does not exist. This is perfect. Now we're almost done. Now we need to just say what the button in the array is. So we're going to say boolean array dot set. Uh, our first parameter will be the value of the boolean incrementer. And we'll set it to what button is. So let's go through all of this again. We have created an empty boolean array and boolean incrementer equals zero. Our code is going to run into G when A is pressed. Since we are at a size 0 and the incrementer is 0, we will add a new value to the array. We will retrieve what that value is at the Boolean incrementer. If those values are different, that means the button changed. And if it ended in true, the button went from false to pressed. Then we are going to output that the button was pressed. When that is done, we are going to set a new value at the Boolean incrementer of what the button now is so we can readjust. And the boolean incrementer will go up one and be ready for g1b is pressed. So now we can do if g1a pressed and servo arm position equals zero, then robot servo arm set position to one. Else, if G and A is pressed and servo arm position 
equals 1, then robot.servoarm a set position 0. We have one mistake. Uh, we did not instantiate what button was is. We're going to make button was is a boolean. So the variable we are retrieving from the boolean array is a boolean. And we are finished. This is a finished method that can read when a button is pressed. Now, what if we wanted to make a method that could read when an analog button is pressed? Say something like the trigger. Well, let's make another method. I'm going to call it the exact same thing if pressed, but this one's going to take in a double button. And this one's going to be a little different, but not very. So we're going to copy and paste the same code. The only problem is that we can't directly add what the Boolean state is into the array, because the button will be giving a double value, so we cannot append that to a Boolean array. What we're going to do is take the value of the double button and convert it to a Boolean with an algorithm. So we're going to say button boolean equals false. And button boolean is going to be the button converted to a boolean. And we're going to say if button is greater than or equal to 0 0.1, then button boolean equals true. That means if the button is pressed down at all, it is a true button. But if it's unpressed less than 0 0.1, it's going to be a false button. So now we're just going to replace button boolean or everywhere we had button. So we're going to say if button boolean does not equal button was, and if button boolean is true, we're also going to add button boolean to the array at the end. And before we save it, I made another mistake. Uh, we have to instantiate this as a boolean. But now we should be able to save it. And we're up and running. We have two methods that can take in any button, digital or analog, and ask if it's pressed. So we could say something like the double of G1 right trigger, which is gamepad one's right trigger, then we can actually ask in a type of a boolean if G1 right trigger is pressed. And that'll be equal to if pressed G1 right trigger. And then we can add it into this if statement, and it'll work just as well as the A. So that completes this tutorial on toggle switches. I hope you guys learned something. If you didn't understand anything in the video, please leave a comment, and I'll be sure to respond. Hit that subscribe button if you want to see any of our future advanced Onbot Java videos, or any of our other videos covering building, design, the engineering notebook, and more. This has been Control Destroy. My name's Nathan, aka The One, and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>